Welcome to the Awaken on Purpose podcast, where each week you'll hear inspirational stories of heart-centered leaders who have awakened to their higher purpose and taken that leap of faith to follow their heart and make an impact in the world. Get ready to be enlightened, empowered, and transformed with your host, Jennifer Spohr. I am overjoyed to welcome Allison Buckland today as our guest. Allison Buckland is a wellness coach certified self-talk trainer, and mom boss who has found her purpose in joyfully connecting community members to the potential within them that their stories reveal to her and coaching them into the healthy whole life they'll love. She believes this is how she makes a meaningful, multi-generational difference in the world. She is passionate about living a healthy, happy, and inspired lifestyle, and now teaches and empowers others to do the same. Using social media as a tool to connect with people all over the world, she is building a global team of individuals who want more out of life, more time, more flexibility, more money, and a greater purpose to create a life by design, leave a legacy for future generations, and make an impact. And boy, are you making an impact. You are one of my favorite people. Hi. Hi. Oh, this is, I am just joyful to be on your podcast, to be talking to you. We got to work together for such a long time and you're one of my favorite people and I'm just so happy to be here. I am so happy to have you. I know that the listeners are excited to hear more about you. So tell us more about what inspired you to do the work you're doing today. How did you get kind of from where you were a few years ago to where you are now? Well, I always grew up just being taught and thinking that I was supposed to go to school, get good grades, be a good person, go to college, pick a major, graduate, find a job, work for the rest of my life, get married, have a family, all those boxes, right, that I was checking off. And so that's what I did. And for over 20 years, I um, have been a sales and marketing professional in various different roles. I've always helped other companies and CEOs succeed. And, but at the heart of that, I always, I just had this tug that there had to be more or this whisper that I didn't start listening to until later on. But really at the heart of it, I know you mentioned me and being a mom boss. First and foremost, I always knew that I wanted to be a mom. And what happened after my husband and I got married, we enjoyed our lifestyle and traveled and did the things that we wanted to do. And then we started to try to have a family and we had unexplained infertility and it did not go as planned. And it ended up taking us four and a half years of trying, 11 fertility attempts. We had a miscarriage at number three, and I ended up living on bed rest in the hospital for seven weeks before I became a mom. Now, that's crazy, all of those things, when I say them out loud and talk about them, but I do it all again in a heartbeat because I didn't know any different, and I always wanted to be a mom, and I got my beautiful miracle, Evelyn, who just turned six last month and is getting ready to start first grade. And, you know, that really just was a defining moment in my life. And when I went back to work after I had Evelyn, after my maternity leave was over, because, you know, that's what I was supposed to do, I quickly found myself desiring more flexibility. I wanted to own my own schedule, still make money. And yet that was, that, that's a really tall order for anybody, but for a busy working mom who's trying to balance career and family and all the other things on my plate, it's just, tough, right? And so what happened that kind of shifted my mindset to start becoming awake and on purpose and living the life that I am today and still growing is that a friend of mine, randomly, a friend of mine from high school, she came over after I had Evelyn and she introduced me to this amazing company that I'm with. And it was my first taste of what it would be like to be an entrepreneur. 
And what appealed to me at first was that my values and what I was looking for aligned with this company and that it was a holistic way of living. And I became a product of these products. I jumped in and started sharing these incredible products and this incredible opportunity and started to learn and grow as I did. Now, what also happened along that line is that that job that I had at the same time became a really toxic and fear-based work culture. And I tried to get out for a long time and find another job because again, that's what I was supposed to do. And ultimately was downsized from my job, but I had this incredible business that I had been exposed to that also then introduced me to what it was like to surround yourself with people that lift you up. This was a vibe uh, and an energy of people that were the tribe of people that I knew that I was supposed to be around. And that's kind of really what ignited my passion for what I've come to learn as my purpose was just really choosing to not only raise my standards for who I surround myself with, but also to learn to stop tolerating less than what I desired or deserved, such as a toxic work culture or surrounding myself with toxic people or choosing what it is that I wanted to do in my life. And so that's really kind of how my journey started. And Through building my business, through interacting on uh, social media and meeting people from all around the world and really finding those people that I vibe with, you know, your vibe attracts your tribe, your energy. I know we can talk a lot about that, Jennifer. Oh, yeah. um, (laughs) That's what really started me on this purpose. And when I started to listen to that whisper and raise my standards and start choosing the things that I wanted to do in my life. So yeah, that brings me to where I am today, I guess. Still learning, of course. So many people, and I was once in that place too, you know, think that they have to settle for the cards that they're dealt, right? They think that that they have to just make do with the work environment that they're in or you know, they think they're too old, it's too late, or they're not good enough to do anything else. What was the switch that actually flipped for you, right? Like when, when was the moment that you decided that you actually had had enough or when was that moment that you actually gained that self-awareness? It was when I found my voice or really it's when I recognized that I did not have a voice in the company that I was with. And then in that respect, I lost trust. Trust is critical. Trust is earned, whether that's with an employer, whether that's with building a relationship, whether that is in the people that you surround yourself with, your tribe, your, you know, in all the interactions that you have. So in the job that was in, I had been there for, I don't know, six years or so at the time. And I'd been a top performer and I loved what I did. Um, I, the products and the service that I, that I offered really aligned with my values. But I was at the job. We had new leadership come in and they were changing the job roles. And they asked me which one I wanted to do. And so I thought about that and selected and shared with them the one that I wanted to do because it aligned with what my heart was leading me. And then found out that I was doing the other job. And that to me was a really defining moment because it's like, not only am I asking permission for what I want to do, you know, when I was working, when in that job role and relying on someone else to make that decision for me. But also I recognize that if you're going to ask me what I want to do and I tell you, and then you give me something completely different then obviously I don't have a voice here. And so I lost trust. And that's when I started looking to get out. Because once you lose trust, I mean, it's hard to gain that back. And even still through that process, as I was um, looking to get out of that current role, 
there was a lot of toxicity involved there and fear. And it was very suffocating to get through. And all this time, I'm trying to manage having a career and providing for my family and being the person that I thought I was meant to be, you know, trying to please others. And so that was literally the defining moment where I'm like, oh no, if I'm losing trust and I don't have a voice here, I have to look elsewhere for where I know that I can have a voice. And through that process, that's where I learned that I needed to raise my standards. What you said about trust and a little earlier on about values being aligned is so important because our work isn't separate from who we are. Our work in, in every, every other area of our life is, is a reflection of who we are, right? So if we're not in a job or a career that is in alignment with our values and our strengths, and especially if we don't have any trust, then inevitably we're going to reach a breaking point. Yep. Every experience in our lives serves a purpose and shapes who we become. What experience in your life do you feel has been the most significant in shaping who you are today? Oh my goodness gracious. <laughs> There's been so many experiences, defining moment experiences and oh goodness gracious. So defining moment, certainly my fertility journey, because that taught me that if you are steadfast in your belief and what you want, and you keep going no matter what, that ultimately you're going to, you're going to be successful, you know, that you're going to have what you want and what you desire. And so that was a critical defining moment. I think in a, another defining moment, which I will share with you really happened over the course of about a two year time period where I went through quite a lot. In a, in a short period of time. And that taught me resiliency and trust and faith. And some of the things that were included in the, that, you know, two year or so time frame were losing my aunt, who was like another mother to me. And she, after a 16 year battle with breast cancer, and she was just a light to the world and someone to emulate. And I just adored her. So I lost her. And then the next month, my mother-in-law, who's another person who is just light-filled and just does so much for others. These are very influential people in my life. She was diagnosed with high-risk acute myeloid leukemia and got a, had a 5% chance of survival. And so navigating that, she's doing amazing now. So she's come through that. But navigating that fear and that, that stress and, and also navigating that with my spouse, who this is his mom, that was also had an emotional toll on me. This is along the same times that I'm going through my job role changing and losing trust in my employer and this toxic work culture that's suffocating. And at the same time, my husband and I had also decided to try to have another baby. We had two frozen embryos that were left. We used one of them that November and that did not work out. And through that process, this was toward the end of 2016. I pretty much lost it. Like I refer to this as like a, a breakdown, a breaking point. I mean, to the point where I had suicidal thoughts. I was not in a good place emotionally. I was able to work my way out of that through a consistent routine of personal growth and development. It's called the Miracle Morning, where I'm, I'm actually going through a challenge right now and doing it. It's just been a consistent practice through meditation and positive self-talk and visualization and reading and diving into personal growth and development to help bring myself out there out of that. But, but that wasn't the end of my defining, you know, I guess, um, time frame. I ended up, you know, somebody close to me, um, that I was mentoring went through a horrific decision that she had to make that didn't align with myself. So I had to distance myself there from that relationship. I lost all my pets. We use you know, my three cats that summer, I was put on a performance plan at work. I had to call HR. I mean, it was all these things using our last embryo and that not working and the hope that, that moving forward, that, that, that held. And then, you know, having through kind of the end of that process, 
you know, having somebody that was really close to me in my life that I realized was pretty, was toxic. And then kind of uncovering some of the limiting beliefs that I had about myself and the people pleasing tendencies and life's a journey and we're all learning as we go. So making it through that process and maintaining and staying true to my values and my strengths, which I now know my strengths, one of my strengths is positivity. I've always had that, you know, glass half full mentality and being faith driven and, and finding a positive reason for everything and knowing that God isn't having me go through this journey and these things if there's not going to be a lesson in all of them. And so my lesson from that whole journey, which really, you know, I've just started to fully come out of quite recently, actually, is that, you know, there's a lesson in everything. And, you know, God does not put something on your heart if it's not meant to be served. It taught me that I am resilient and that I can do anything I put my mind to. And also in part of that journey, it's to focus on the simplicity of what is within my control. And that's really it. (laughs) Well, beyond the lessons, you're now already sharing a lot of that wisdom and helping other people on their journey too. And, And that's really what it's all about. You know, we, it's hard for us to understand, to truly value what it is we want without experiencing some level of contrast. Yes. And during this process, you know, I mentioned personal growth and development. That was a key factor. But the other key factor, which really awakens me to uncovering what my purpose is, is through my own personal health journey. And I started that I'd gotten to a place where I just did not feel comfortable in my skin. I had body image issues that um, I had learned through, you know, my, my upbringing uh, that had led me to disordered eating habits that I had as positive as I am. I didn't really like myself. And so I entered into a healthy lifestyle and through that process, it really just reset my gut, reset my system. I started paying attention to the foods that I was eating, whether how I was feeling, whether or not those things were serving my body. And, and through that process, that health journey, that 30 day reset, not only did I start to have more energy and focus and release weight, but it translated to a lot of mental clarity and that connection from my gut to my brain. And, and I learned that if this is helpful to me, then I need to share this with other people. And not only through that process, but also at the same time, growing a business around coaching others into their healthy whole life that they'll love. You know, I was able to uncover that it's a combination of things that, that help. Yes, it's the lessons that that we learn, but it's also taking the lessons we learn as you just shared and telling that to other people so that they can have a solution. The same solution that helped you can then help other people. So we can't, we can't keep quiet about the things that have served us. And that ignited a passion for health, a passion for personal growth and development, a passion for mindset, a passion for and uncovering how, how we can incorporate positive messages into our life to then reverse a lot of the negative messages that build up over time. And this has all been because I've continually committed to learning and growing myself to not only get out of the times that, I mean, and trust me, we all go through the things. We all have the things, whether it's loss, whether it's health diagnosis, whether that's you know, defining moments in our life, multiple defining moments, because life is life, right? And we all have those things. So but it's when we experience things, and we find things that help us, I really think that it, it when we listen to that inner voice, 
and we share that with others, it not only, it just creates that ripple effect. And, you know, I'm, I'm, I've become, you know, almost uh, addicted to creating that ripple effect to seeing others succeed, which has then been the, the purpose that's been ignited in me through that tumultuous journey and through that, those traumas that I've had that I've then found the lesson and be able to share that with others, um, which has brought me to where I am today. Addicted to making an impact. I love that. Now that <laughs> addiction, I will condemn. <laughs> right, right, right. And you know, I was, I, I was taught early on is that if you want to grow a business, you have to grow yourself. And so I really became uh, addicted to that and addicted to helping others to do and creating that ripple effect. And it is an addiction that yes, you can, you can stand behind, um, you know, a purpose, like more of a purpose than an addiction. It's like, you know, it fills me up. A to, sense of urgency. A sense of urgency, right, around around giving that gift to others, whether that's through the words that we speak, through the people that come into our life, through sharing our experience, through being vulnerable and authentic and sharing the hard times in addition to the good times, because we all have the hard times. And the more you can let your experiences out and you know, learn from others through finding a trusted advisor or a coach or somebody to help bring those things out, the more we can all continue to grow. Absolutely. There are a lot of people out there who are feeling a call to make a change in their life, you know, to change their career, maybe to do something where they can feel like they're making a difference and, and, and making an impact. But they might be holding back, you know? So what would be your number one piece of advice where someone could take action today to move forward in the direction that their soul is calling them? Find their voice, really. And if there's a nudge within you, it's there for a reason. I think that if somebody has that inner voice or that intuition, it's there for a reason to pay attention to it, to even if it's just the simplest step for journaling, for writing it down, writing what you're feeling down and out, sharing it with a trusted advisor, you know, sharing it with somebody or just because the more we hold on to things, that inner tug that we could suppress because maybe our, our inner voice or the things that we've learned have are telling us, oh, you could never do that, or you're not good enough for that, or who do you think you are to think you'd be able to do that, or you're not worthy of doing that. All of us have that inner voice that, that I mean, quite frankly, we wouldn't speak to anyone how we speak to ourselves. And, and what, we sh what we say to, when we talk to ourselves, our inner voice you know, is a lot of the times the things that is creating those negative things that go to work to not serve us. So if somebody has a call, I really think that it, it's important to let it out because the more you hold that in, the more resistance that you are creating for yourself, for your life, for your future. And there's definitely some, I mean, this is a huge world we live in. By you keeping to yourself what maybe you're feeling called to do, that could be, there's somebody waiting out there for you to just share that, to share your gift, to share what you think you're called to do, to listen to that inner voice. Somebody out there is waiting for you to have the courage, because it takes courage to listen to that, to pay attention and monitor what it is that's on your heart somebody's, it takes courage. Somebody's waiting for you to have courage to be able to share what that is so that then they can have permission and they can learn from what you've shared or what maybe you're being called to do. So speak it, write it out, share it. Like as scary as it is, just, just do it. Find a trusted advisor, find a coach. I mean, find somebody to share that with. And through doing that, you little by little, you're going to release that resistance that you put in. And when you do that, and I know you know this, Jennifer, because you've taught a lot of these things to me. When you start to release that resistance, you'll see and you'll find that the people that you're meant to serve, the 
relationships you're meant to be in, the circumstances that you're meant to have will start being attracted to you through that energy that you put out. And so that's my advice. Just don't hold it in. Life is so short, so short. And we're reminded that through the things that we go through um, and through just every day. I mean, it really is. And yes, we have to live each day in the moment, but you don't want to regret not doing so. We're not going to look back on our life and be like, oh, I wish I would have kept that to myself. No, no, you're not. You're going to just see right. what's going to I wish I, wouldn't, I wish I wouldn't have felt so much joy. I wish, right. I, I, mean, wish I wouldn't have yeah. taken a leap of faith. Like who actually says that? Nobody. No one. <laughs> or, or but at I first, about, yeah. it's really scary to do it, but no one ever says they wish they didn't do it. Right. Exactly. You don't, you don't. I mean, I, I released a, a huge burden recently and, and that was on my heart for a long or on my, on me for, for a long time. And that was, the, it was hard. It took courage and I did it. And it was the path of least resistance and I did it. And I, I'm not going to, I don't ever, I will never regret that I did it because things have worked out and, and things are starting to evolve. I've seen so many things that have come to fruition just by releasing that and putting a voice to what I was holding inside, asking for help. I mean, asking for help. That's the key thing. You, not only having a voice, but ask somebody to help you articulate it or just maybe find some people are willing to help. People are wanting to help. So it doesn't just ask someone. How can someone find you if they want to learn more about what you're up to or just continue the conversation with you? Yeah, absolutely. You can find me. I mean, I'm on all social platforms, Facebook and LinkedIn, of course, Allison Buckland on both of those. I, I am on Instagram, but um, usually you'll find me on LinkedIn or Facebook mostly. Um, my website isn't launched yet, but AllisonBuckland.com will be coming. So at some point, so ultimately you'll be able to find me there. Um, if you're, if anybody, any of your listeners are listening or interested in starting a health journey or finding out more about how they can work with me specifically for um, coaching or for utilizing positive self-talk to change their life, you can certainly connect with me on one of those two platforms. Send me a message and reach out and we'll connect and have a conversation and go from there. Fantastic. I want to thank you so much for taking the time to join us today. I just have massive love for you. I have massive love for you too. <laughs> Working together as long as we did and just in our overall spiritual alignment and how kind you are and how much you're helping others as well. And I just, I love you too. So I'm just grateful to be on your podcast, to be able to share with your listeners who are looking to become awake and, and find their purpose and leave an impact and help others. Well, I know that by you sharing your story today, that it certainly has inspired some other people to move forward. Thank you so much again for joining us, Allison. My pleasure. Thank you for listening to the Awake and On Purpose podcast. Please visit us and subscribe to the podcast at awakeandonpurpose.com so you never miss an episode. To learn more about how you can connect with your higher purpose and take that leap of faith to make your impact in the world, visit us at jenniferspoor.com. And while you're there, be sure to join our email list for exclusive offers and a weekly dose of inspiration.